let's see. Yeah, so as well said, I will talk about uh, biocide resistance uh, and more generally about biosphere-based boundaries in the Anthropocene and how we can think about their dynamics. And I'm going to talk about uh, sort of three aspects of the boundaries or as uh, sort of channeling Sarah, the safe operating space. Um, humans, co-evolution and baselines. And I will end with a bit of uh, reflections on how we can best guide society about uh, how to preserve biosphere integrity. So, but if we think about boundaries in the Anthropocene, um, I think there are a couple of things we need to sort of establish first. First of all, the Anthropocene, one definition being that humans are driving the Earth system out of the Holocene into the Anthropocene. So that is in itself uh, the definition, one definition, I would say, from an Earth system point of view of the Anthropocene. So humans are drivers. But I think one thing that is clear from, if we look at the two titles of the original papers, is also that humans are also the navigators uh, of this framework. So the framework should uh, inform humans and human society. Essentially, it's all about humans, you could say. So, so that's clear and I don't think that's very new. Uh, and I think certainly that's been touched upon this morning as well. But then I think one aspect that is interesting and maybe sometimes overlooked is that I would say, we can say that the human operating space or the safe operating space, the planetary boundaries actually co-evolves with human society. And that might sound strange now that Johan said there are nine and they don't change, but I think we actually already have evidence of it. Uh, we can, for example, look at stratospheric ozone depletion, which is a good example of a boundary that co-evolved a vulnerability of human society that co-evolved with our technology. Um, so if we didn't have uh, technology that emitted ozone depleting substances, we probably wouldn't have had this uh, part of the framework already. Um, and I will talk about then two of the, you could say, not so easy boundaries to think about. I'll illustrate another example of co-evolution um, that touches on biosphere integrity and novel entities. And part of what I want to show there is that we don't always have Holocene as a, as a good baseline. So sometimes we need uh, to come up with some other uh, way of finding a baseline. So this is uh, what we call in a paper from last year, the Anthropocene operating space. Um, and we apply that concept uh, in a more concrete fashion to um, the challenges of antibiotic resistance and pesticide resistance. So here on the graph, you see uh, pesticide production through time. It could actually have been one of the great acceleration graphs, I think. Um, and similarly with the antibiotic, uh, this is the number of antibiotic classes introduced or in use in society. So sort of also going up through time through the 20th century. And in this paper, we apply the concept, concept of niche construction. And I think I was really appreciative of uh, Sperger's talk this morning uh, about the environing, uh, I think, um, technologies, because this is a good example of a technology that create other vulnerabilities. So it's a related concept, niche construction. Um, there you have it, antibiotics, pesticides. And here is sort of our assessment of the framework um, that we introduced. So you have, uh, again, here are some a safe and uncertain and uh, regionally and a globally surpassed uh, state of the operating space. And as you can see, there's one uh, type of resistance, uh, antibiotic resistance in gram-negative uh, organisms. Right now, we don't have any antibiotics that work to treat some of these gram-negative infections. Um, and coming back to the, the thing about baselines here, um, so what should be the baseline for setting these, uh, these uh, lines that we draw around the picture of the Anthropocene? Um, because when we were in, sort of before 2050, maybe we could say in the Holocene, um, susceptibility, susceptibility is the opposite of resistance, wasn't actually something that humans depended on because we didn't have antibiotics or pesticide to treat um, infections or agricultural pests. 
Um, so we can't really use the Holocene state as a, as a baseline, but we have to come up with other ways. And, and here uh, we used um, a simple classification scheme. Uh, so here we have pan resistance. This is when there are no other um, uh, pesticides or antibiotics that work. But we have a large uncertain zone uh, going between sort of single drug resistance and multi-drug multi resistance up to extensive uh, drug resistance. Um, and uh, if you want to read more about the, this exact framework, uh, I'll point you to, to the paper, um, and maybe we can come back to it as well in the discussions. But I think this illustrates nicely the concept of uh, co-evolution. And really, if you think about it, it is actually an example of how technology is involved in co-producing ecosystem services. And here we can argue that this ecosystem service of biocide susceptibility, we argue that it has non-linear linear global dynamics, so there are actually some thresholds. So this paper provoked me to think more generally about uh, biosphere integrity in the Anthropocene. And so far, Belinda talked about it this morning. Uh, in the 2015 paper, I think it covers three aspects. Uh, the potential for life to keep evolving, that's the extinction rate, and also uh, phylogenetic diversity. And then there's the role of the biosphere in Earth system functioning. But I think we, we may be missing one part if we are really to guide humans uh, as, uh, sort of towards safely navigating the Anthropocene. So there are some other things, some other biosphere processes that human society depend on that we want to inform them about uh, to identify guardrails for. Um, and I think it might have to do with sort of global scale ecosystem services or ecosystem function thinking. So we right now have a master student, Anil Singh, who is uh, working on this uh, at the center. So you can also talk to him if you want to hear more. And one, my final contribution would be sort of actually, if we think more about the, the sort of the functional diversity, the new component of biosphere integrity, if we think about that, that actually can be thought about as a sort of biological contribution uh, to many of the different boundaries. So I think this touches upon the point that Belinda mentioned this morning, that biodiversity is part of regulating many of the boundaries. And actually we can think about physical, chemical and biological control variables for multiple of the boundaries. So I think there's thinking to do. I think this may be one frontier. I'll be happy to hear comments and discuss more. Um, but I for sure look forward to see how the planetary boundaries look in another 10 years from now. Thank you.